Okay, the cone shell is now ready to inject. And, oh, we've got it now. Okay, so we've now tethered to the container, scissors. We are now going to sever the harpoon from the cone shell and the container. We now have the remnants of the hypodermic needle. There's uh, only enough uh, material mostly to fill a pinhead, but that's enough material mostly to kill three or four individuals if uh, injected into them. The process of obtaining the venom is time consuming, but its unique properties hold promise for creating whole new categories of drugs, potentially useful against many diseases. For example, when isolated, one toxin in cone snail venom showed remarkable capacity to block pain. That toxin became the key to creating a painkiller 1,000 times more powerful than morphine. And here we have the world supply of uh, Conus obscurus milk venom. In here, we may have a new potential lead to cure cancer. We may have the ability to affect Alzheimer's patients and their memory loss uh, and to promote uh, pain killing. As a chemist, I'm in a, a complete awe of these snails. For me to make those toxins synthetically would take me thousands of years of labor, just physically thousands of years. These snails make it every day and they're at our fingertips. But snails certainly haven't cornered the market on healing toxins. The roster of deadly lifesavers is growing day by day. Scorpions are now showing promise in treating epilepsy and brain cancer. Spider venom in controlling heart arrhythmias. Komodo dragons in lowering blood pressure. And vipers in the battle against the devastation of stroke, diabetes, kidney disease and heart failure. But it's been around for a very long time. So basically, venom's been around for a very long time. So basically, nature's already done all the work for us. We just need to be clever enough to find out a way to use it. For molecular biologist Brian Fry, there's a special urgency in the race for venomous drugs because many of our deadly saviors are disappearing. Fry is trying to save unlikely heroes, like this endangered beaded lizard. In the process, he's rewriting the book on venom. Here's a happy little sausage. Right the venoms of the beaded's and their cousins, the Gila monsters, have already yielded powerful drugs to treat diabetes. And no one has really had the chance to delve into the toxins of their cousins just now being recognized as venomous, thanks to Brian. Enthusiastic little Trump, is <laughs> I imagine oh, yeah. that's your finger. He's not letting go anytime soon. With the venomous lizards, it's long been thought that only the beaded lizard and the Gila monster are the two venomous lizards out there. But I've recently discovered that there's a lot more venomous lizards than just these two. There's about another 200 species of venomous lizard, including even the iconic Komodo dragon, is actually venomous they could harbor the next wonder drug. The other benefit of toxins as drug candidates is the sheer number of them. A chemical can evolve much more quickly than a body part like a tooth or a claw. With such a rapid evolution for such vast time scales, that means you end up with a dizzying array of available toxins, some of which are of course just statistically bound to be useful. If you know of anybody, for example, taking high blood pressure medication, odds are they're taking a class of compound called ACE inhibitors. Well, the founding member of this multi-billion dollar drug class was actually a modified snake toxin from one of the biggest, meanest, most horrible South American snakes, has saved countless lives while making a lot of people a lot of money. Money, Brian hopes, will be the ultimate savior of these venomous creatures and the endangered places they inhabit. An argument for their conservation can be made is through the commercialization of novel compounds in their venom. So we need to keep them around. 
the only reason people are going to preserve anything in nature is if money can be made off of it. It's an argument that is finally being heard loud and clear as the demand for new drugs increases. In his lab in Chicago, Zoltan Takash checks up on his toxic samples, brought from steamy forests to a frosty sub-zero freezer for safekeeping. This is my toxin DNA library. I have more than 1,200 samples from all over the world. Sea snakes, cobras, crates, vipers, you name it, it's here. And this is actually very, very valuable. This is a lifetime work. I have samples back from the high school, so it's a long time. And this is the samples back from Vietnam. This is like a Christmas gift. You know it's cool, but you don't know what's inside. And right now, I'm going to isolate the DNA and just reveal that information. Reveal that evolutionary information and use that to build toxin libraries to screen for new drug leads. To find out what's inside his latest sample, Zoltan and a graduate student Katarina Rusik put the DNA through a sequencing machine to find out the letters that make up its genetic code. This is the DNA sequence of the toxins. All of these letters, C, T, C, G, G, A, T, those are the letters which tell the toxin how to kill you. That's very powerful information. And what we're doing here, we change the letters around a little bit, tweak it, to make the toxin to save your life. Across the street at the University of Chicago Medical Center, rattlesnake venom, chemically altered to make it safe, is about to save the life, not of a victim of snake bite, but of a heart Morning. attack. Morning. Today, for every one person who dies from snake bite each year, at least 350 are being treated with drugs rooted in snake venom. Cardiac surgeon Atman Shah has been called in to perform a procedure on a patient who has a massive blockage in the vessels leading to his heart. And he'll be depending on rattlesnake venom to make the procedure a success. To, go ahead and put the catheter into the right common femoral artery. In terms of patients who come to the emergency room with a heart attack, most of those heart attacks are caused by a platelet blockage in the artery. Can you start recording now, please, Danielle? He'll be Thank busting you. that blockage wide open with a stent, but it won't stay open if the blood's normal clotting factors kick in. That's where the rattler venom, called integralin, comes in. So when there's a foreign body in the bloodstream, platelets want to stick together and form clots. What integralin will do is it'll prevent receptors on the platelets from linking with other receptors on other platelets and forming a very large clot. 11.5 ml. Something that would cause uh, bleeding and potentially uh, hemorrhage with a snake bite we can control, basically cause controlled bleeding inside the vessel. Together, the stent and the venom clear the vessel and the circulation through the heart is dramatically restored. It has probably saved countless lives in using them compared to patients who haven't received it. Countless more lives hang in the balance. There are potentially 20 million toxins in nature. Only a few hundred have been studied in depth. From these, a dozen drugs have been approved. And dozens more are in clinical trials. That's a million plus drugs slithering, skittering, and skulking around out there. No wonder the people who pursue these creatures are so passionate about understanding them and conserving them. I love exploring the unknown, and I love to seeing beauty of nature. And when you get the snake from the rainforest, you take it back to the lab, and you understand something, what nature has been doing for millions of years, I think that's a very cool moment. Venoms are, are just a, a gold mine of chemistry. It's just rich for exploration and discovery. But then what also struck my passion about it is, uh, you know, it's going extinct before we know what's in there. They're a resource. If we wipe them out, then that means that you could be destroying the next component that might have made you a billion dollars or saved your grandmother's life. 
But we've only started to open that, that black box of what Venom can do to help us. It's powerful stuff. It can kill you, but it can also save your life.